read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners Hey, lady listeners, welcome, welcome. We've got BB Reed this week. Just a brand new book called The Wrong Blue Eyes, which I, like, know, I love that title for some reason. I'm like, ooh, it already just sounds intriguing, just uh-huh. the title name. Like right away, out of yeah. the gate. It's like, okay, tell me more. Mm-hmm. I need to know what happens next. <laughs> She's so sweet. She's been on the podcast with us before. She was way back in season one or two. But her book is, I don't believe it's in our past records. And I don't think you can go back and listen to it because I think she took the book and expanded it. And it, you said it's in KU now, right? Is that what she yeah. on the website? Yeah. So that one she did with us is on there. But um, but BB Reads awesome. And I love her so much. She's so cool. And um, She is cool. Like, right? her, like when I see her posting on Facebook, uh-huh. have you ever see people and you're like, God, they're cool. Yeah, she like, is. <laughs> and she's probably like, I'm a dork. But no, she is. She's like a badass. And every time I see her post, I'm like, gosh, she's just so cool. I don't, I don't know a better way to describe her other than that. Yeah. But um, she's got so many great books. If you love like bully romance, just get ready. She's she's awesome with that. Go check out. She's got the punk and the play thing, the peer and the puppet, like all these great. She just recovered all of them, too. We were talking about that earlier. I was like, she doesn't even have the same cover she did before, but they're all so cool. Again, yeah, all of her stuff's in KU. There's an audios, too, for them. So mm-hmm. she's got it hooked up for you guys. She's hella cool. And, and you know, I met her in person. She's awesome. I, I, I can't say enough great things about her. So we're super glad to have her on the podcast. But before we get to her book and more stuff on that, let's catch up. It's been a hot minute since we've been together. We had a I break know. over Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? Did you eat a lot of great food? It was the same. Just everybody <laughs> hanging out, eating the exact same food we always eat. You were telling me that your cousin wasn't coming because there was like some drama or something. And I was like, gosh, I miss that. I don't get together with any of my extended family anymore. Like, I don't see any of them. I was just, I was just wondering. Like, Man, I miss that cousin come. drama shit. <laughs> I love my cousin. Like, I was even talking to my sister about it today. I was like, she always makes me laugh. But I'm like, but then the same time, she's a little bit of a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> I choked them all over. <laughs> she's a little bit of a horrible person. <laughs> yeah, she is. I mean, some I mean, of the stuff she do? Knows, and I'm just cool. like, oh, it's hard for me to realize they're the same person. It's weird to me. It's hard. But I like I said, I've kind of cut her out of my life, sadly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I it's- wondered, I was like, God, I wonder if she's coming to, Cur- or to Thanksgiving. And I called mm-hmm. my dad. And my dad's like, no. <laughs> He's so dramatic. But you yeah, know, unvaccinated people are allowed in his house. Well, I mean, and you got to be okay with that too. I mean, especially if that's their house and it's their decision and their health they're worried about. I mean, especially like, you know, everything that's happened with your family and stuff like you want yeah, to protect them. My, and- mom, my grandma just got over cancer mm-hmm. treatments and everything. So, yeah, they're yeah. really strict over there. So. Yeah, as they should be. I mean, for her health too. But, um, so I actually spent Thanksgiving alone. What? I know. You were actually a- really quiet over the weekend. I know. It was wonderful. It was the best Thanksgiving ever. So I, you know, every year it's a fight. My husband's home, so I'm going to try not to say this too loud. But, you know, every year it's a fight, the holidays. Yeah. And, you know, my husband and I talked leading up to it, and I was just like, I don't have to go. Yeah. Like, I love you. But I don't have, they're not my family. I don't have to do this. So I didn't. (laughs) And I stayed home. And I didn't realize until like 8 o'clock on Thanksgiving that nothing was open. Like not McDonald's, not Walmart. Gas stations. (laughs) I ate gas station junk food. (laughs) For Thanksgiving. It was still great. Like I have no complaints. (laughs) I had Thanksgiving and gas station food. Yep. Like I was like, what is this? A treat. So you just <laughs> stayed home by yourself and you didn't cook or anything? Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Didn't. Yeah. I stayed home. But to be fair, they were gone like less than 24 hours. Yeah. So, so they go I mean, the day before or something? Yeah. Well, no, they went like Thanksgiving day. They left that morning at like 
10 o'clock and we're back the next morning. You know, I mean, it was basically one whole day where I didn't have to do anything. You know, I but. think that's a really fair, nice compromise. You get, yeah. it's like a relaxing mom day for you. By it yourself. was, it really was. And like, it gave me a chance to catch up on stuff. And I watched the Great British Baking Show. Like I watched the finale by myself without interruptions. Nice. And it was like, it was really, it, it was a good mental health day in general, but it was just one of those things like it, it got to where it be where it was always a fight and it, it probably, I won't get this pass again next year, but for this year, at least it was just, let's just not do it. Let's, and he, let's and that was it. totally cool. I think he understood how stressed I'd been for the past few weeks because he has been, he had two positions he had to fill in his office. Last week, he hired two different people for mm -hmm. new positions. They had to create positions in his office because there's just so much work. And so he filled the position. So, but for the past couple of weeks, he's been trying to keep up with this and do interviews and hiring process and all this whole thing. So he hasn't really been home much to help contribute. And I think he understood, like, I was just super stressed and leaving even for a day was just another thing I didn't want to do. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, let's just, let's just let people be disappointed if they're going to be disappointed and deal with it. And how was the other end of that? Did you get any like? I didn't hear a thing. I don't know. I didn't ask. <laughs> I was just like, you know, there's shit I don't want to know. You know, yeah. like if it's not going to, I don't know. I talked to my therapist about it too before. And I was just like, this is what I'm thinking. And she's like, yeah, but you know, you should be supportive and communicate. And I was like, you know what though? I understand that. But I also feel like I've been supportive for 15 years. You know, yeah. like that's how long I've been doing this. And it, and I told her, I said, I don't know at what point I'm just enabling this behavior with all of them where sure. it's like, if I go and I just play nice and I agree to it, then they're going to expect it. So, sure. so yeah, again, I don't, I don't know if this will be a tradition that continues, but I thoroughly enjoyed myself. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, fuck Thanksgiving. It's just an excuse to get together and eat. I don't really celebrate it for any other reason. I missed one Thanksgiving one time, and I never heard the end of it. I was going to say, I bet your dad still brings that shit up, doesn't he? I actually, now that I said <laughs> that, I haven't heard it for a minute. So, but I'm not going to bring it up. Well, are you still making the wings? That's all I want to know. <laughs> like, oh, don't, yes. Yeah. Like, you have to make those, right? Like, that's, that's a thing. birthday and Father's Day. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know if it was at Thanksgiving, too. You had to throw those Thanksgiving, I have to make the eggs oh the deviled eggs yeah i have to make like I three did, dozen i did miss the i missed the food i did miss that but at the same time we do it at christmas too yeah so it's like literally a couple weeks later we're having the same fucking thing again which so I don't, I don't even i don't care like when i made my plate i didn't even put turkey on it i didn't eat turkey fuck turkey i can't and i can't stress that enough fuck a turkey i don't chicken or ham i want ham i don't ham, I'll have all the sides and just give me like a burger. I don't even care. Yeah. You know what? Make your own rules. There's no <laughs> fucking rules anymore. I'm just you, not a turkey person. I'm just like, meh. You know, and it's funny. I was messaging Carrie about it. And we were talking on um, like Instagram or whatever. We were messaging back and forth. And she was talking about she was making collard greens, which is like one of my favorite, favorite sides. And I was like, I would kick macaroni and cheese to the other town for a bowl of decent collard greens. Last I time I've ever had collard greens. Oh man, if you get them, you got to get them done right. Like I, it, it is easy to fuck them up, but if yeah. you get a good bowl, oh, what do they? Fuck, what do they taste better. like? Is it like green beans? Uh, yeah, I could say yeah, a little bit like that. Not as PC. It's more together. It's um like like really really cooked cabbage. Okay. Like really I'm not a cabbage, cabbage. fan, or, but yeah. I can eat green beans like by the can. Mm -hmm. I love green beans, but collards are a little different, especially if you get like turnip greens. There's a little tang to them, or like mustard greens, a little tang. Mm -hmm. Collard greens are just oh my god. I like them um, the southern way where you boil the shit out of them for like 12 hours and they're just mush. That's mm -hmm. how I like them. But it sounds disgusting, but it's so good because you do it with like bacon and grease and oh my god. Anyways. I'm like my mouth's watering, but like my, I could, I could go without most of the sides except collards and like sweet potato souffle, like mm -hmm. the sweet potatoes with the caramelized pecans on top. Yeah. That's the only way I want it. Oh my 
Yeah. I'm in it for the stuffing and mashed potatoes and homemade raw. Like I'm in it for the carbs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> oh, um, I have on here. I read a book. So I started it the other day as an audio and I started listening to it and I was like, listen to the first chapter and I was getting angry because I was like, it's a new, it was like uh, the mystery series. I read the, the Kim Stone series by Angela Marsons. This is book like 16. I think, mm -hmm. I don't know. We're just in it. I don't even care if she numbers them from here on out, but I was reading the first chapter and I was like, I've read this book. This is bullshit. She's re-releasing a book. That's what it, I was listening to. And I was like, I was getting angry. And I was going to Amazon and I was looking at it and it said it just released November 11th. I was like, no, I know this chapter. And I was like, but wait, what happens? What happens yeah. after this? What happens after the mystery? And then I was like, you know what? Two months ago, she released the audio, a code for it in her newsletter for a sneak peek for the first four chapters. And I listened to it two fucking months ago. I was like going to email her. I was so mad. <laughs> I was going to email it. I love I it. Like, I was like, I was pissed. But then I couldn't remember what happens. And I was like, no, this sounds familiar, but I can't remember who the killer is. Yeah. And then I'm going through it and I'm like, uh, I'm so stupid. Because <laughs> I actually went back through my emails and found it. And I was like, surely I bought this already. Because I, I pre-order everything. I but listened it was oh, a good God. idea. Sorry. It was just saying it was a good idea that she did that. She had gotten the audio back early. So she gave the first four chapters for free in her newsletter. If you went and downloaded it, you had to have a secret code. And yeah. so if you got it, you went and downloaded it. And I was hooked. And so I mean, I mean, I always pre-order, but even if I hadn't pre-ordered, those four first chapters were like edge of my seat. Like mm -hmm. what's going to happen next? So, but what are you reading? I read the, I did the boss. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Melanie Moreland one. What yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. How ridiculous is that beginning? You know, and I want to say this to other people because I think this is why I hesitated to read it at first. Mm -hmm. Was I was like, okay, it's a forced, really quick arranged marriage. And I was like, I'm not looking forward to the long, slow pull of him trying to pull away and not being in mm -hmm. love. And this is a marriage of can be. No. No. Nope. 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 <laughs> he's in. He's like, no. Nope, he's fucking in. crazy. He's not like, oh, fighting this or whatever. No. No. He's so like, that's what, so he's you guys, if anybody else was having that small hesitation, like I knew I was going to read it, but I was just kind of like putting it off to the side. Mm -hmm. But no, it was wonderful. I oh, enjoyed God. every second of it. He's, he's incredible. He's an incredible hero, but he's also crazy, mm -hmm. but he's obsessed. Yes. Oh my God. It's so good. It felt like something we would have written. I was almost upset that I didn't think about this idea before <laughs> as I was reading. I was like, damn it. This is such a good idea. I wish I would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was really so good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. That series is awesome. So that's, oh, it's called The Boss by Melanie Moreland. Just in case you didn't hear us talk about it before. It was awesome yeah like the first um, chapter he she sees something she's not supposed to and he's like well i guess we got to get married <laughs> like well that's the only solution is that i mean and it's I like 10 minutes her. after he meets her <laughs> i love that she was naive but not and mm -hmm. innocent and mm -hmm. weak and strong in yeah. parts and growing her mm -hmm. strength it was just it was really good all around even her and that's it's really well, hard to get a hero where you want them to have a little bit of innocence and mm -hmm. need to be protected, but at the same time that they grow to be stronger. Mm -hmm. nice. And I love that, you know, she had a really shitty past. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made her so cautious, but also very, like, aware of how good he was to her. Yeah, you know? definitely. It was just, it, it was, it was amazing. It was a fun read. But um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about BB. We're going to keep... Um, the next couple of episodes a little bit shorter because it's the holidays. And so we know like if you're on the run and you're on the go and all that good stuff, you just want to listen to your book and be about your day. So we'll won't, we won't, we're not going to drag it out today. How about that? <laughs> all right. So let me pull up um, BB stuff over right here. This is the wrong blue eyes. I'll read you the book bio for it. Noelle is far from a good girl. In fact, she can be downright bad. Everyone she meets adores her wild antics. Well, everyone except for her boyfriend. When Paxson suggests a trip to Aspen for the weekend, 
Noelle decides to find that missing spark. But what Noelle thinks is a romantic getaway turns out to be a party for four. If two's a company and three's a crowd, what do you call when a sexy fourth wheel with blue eyes and a killer smile? Answer, your boyfriend's twin brother. <laughs> now I get it. I know, right? Mm -hmm. And this said that her author bio is B.B. Reed is the author of several novels, including the hit Enemies to Lovers, Fear Me. She grew up the only daughter and middle child in a small town in North Carolina. After graduating with a bachelor's in finance, she started her career at an investment research firm while continuing to serve in the National Guard. She currently resides in Charlotte with her moody cat and enjoys collecting Chuck Taylors and binge eating chocolate. Text READER, R-E-I-D-E-R, -E to 474747 for new release alerts. Or visit her website for more information at bbreadread.com. So, without further ado, let's get into it. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. This is The Wrong Blue Eyes by B.B. Reed. Read for you by Lou Banks. Chapter 1 Noel Four Days Until Christmas Last call for flight 1719 to Aspen, Colorado. The boarding doors will be closing in five minutes. Shit. We're gonna miss our plane, my boyfriend griped for the 40th time since he opened his eyes this morning. I felt Paxton's glare as I shoved my beanie over my black hair but I ignored him anyway and grabbed my coat from the bin. True, our flight was leaving in five minutes, and we just now made it through security. But how was this my fault? Are you happy, Noel? I turned to him since he was so determined to have this fight. There was a gleam in his blue eyes, as if I'd fallen for some hidden trap. His dark hair was perfectly styled despite the early morning hour, and his long, athletic body was encased in a white sweater, gray overcoat, and blue jeans. I watched his jaw, which looked sharp enough to cut diamonds, flex as he waited for me to piss him off. Paxton was breathtaking, but he may as well have been covered in boils and slime right now. Why are you blaming me? Maybe because you thought it was a good idea to pack on the morning of our flight? We should have been here hours ago. I'm sorry that I didn't see the need to pack three months in advance or sit in an airport for six hours just so your anus could relax. If you would let me pack for you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We've been dating for three years, and you still don't know what brand of tampons I use, so why would I trust you to pack my clothes? If I left it to Pax, I'd be spending my entire vacation with my headlights on and socks that didn't match. You guys? The soft sound of my best friend's voice drew my attention away from my prick of a boyfriend. Felicity's green eyes were wide, and her cheeks were flushed pink. When I looked around, I realized why. All eyes were on us. Please, let's just go. We can still make it if we hurry. I watched my boyfriend as he visibly softened as he stared at my best friend. Felicity playing referee was nothing new. In fact, she'd been doing it for most of our relationship, but lately, it had become sort of a full-time job for her. The first year between Pax and me had been great. The sex was amazing, our conversations flowed, and even though we were complete opposites, I used to believe he was good for me balance, you know? Lately, though, I couldn't help feeling more stifled than stable, and everything that once made me believe we could work had faded a long time ago. First, the all-night pillow talks, and then eventually the sex. It's been three months since Paxton and I fucked, and my fingers were no longer enough. Yeah, let's go, Pax agreed before flashing Felicity that same charming smile I'd fallen for. Felicity smiled back before looking at me, and I could see the question in her eyes. Are you okay? I answered the unspoken question with a shrug. 
Paxton being annoyed with me was our new normal. I swear it was like if I breathed too heavily, he'd up and disappear for hours. I used to cry myself to sleep, knowing my boyfriend didn't love me anymore. But now I'd grown used to being nothing more than his baggage. I don't know why I didn't just end it. I tried to work up the courage many times. But then I'd see his face and couldn't imagine walking away. Literally, I'd see his face and get the urge to jump his bones rather than leave him. It was the strangest thing. At this point, my only hope was to pack my bags and send him an email once I was gone. Harsh but necessary. After a record-breaking sprint across the terminal, the three of us arrived at our gate with only seconds to spare. Pax and Felicity immediately rushed toward the gate, completely unaware that my feet had become glued to the floor. Leaning over the gate desk was a familiar set of broad shoulders. The man attached to them had been flirting with the pretty agent behind it when he suddenly turned at the sound of our arrival. Tall, dark hair, blue eyes, athletic body, and a jaw sharp enough to cut diamonds. Sound familiar? Hey, Pax, what's your rush? The man called out with a teasing smile. Pax, already one foot through the gate, came to a screeching halt when he finally noticed his brother, his twin brother. Nick? Pax did an about face and met his brother halfway for a manly hug. I thought you'd already be on the plane. Excuse me. What? I guess now I knew why he insisted we bring Felicity along. This was never meant to be a romantic getaway. Any hope I had of us salvaging our relationship died a quick and grisly death. And if I knew you wouldn't be, I wouldn't have bothered showing up two hours early. Thanks for the heads up, bro. His gaze then shifted to Felicity standing next to his brother before quickly dismissing her and moving on. A deep frown covered his face when he didn't find who he was looking for. Me. Where's Elle? Elle. The pet name Nick had taken upon himself to call me despite my insistence that he didn't. As if Pax had only just realized I was missing, he looked around with a frown until he spotted me standing in the hall amongst the thick crowd. I watched as he wordlessly nodded my way before giving his brother a look... I couldn't read. Something passed between them that had my hackles rising, but before I could call them both out on their shit, Nick was suddenly barreling my way. L. I squealed my surprise when he yanked me off my feet and pulled my body to his until my tits were smashed against his hard chest. I felt his lips on my cheek, but thankfully, before I could embarrass myself, he set me back on my feet. What you been up to, party girl? I offered up a smirk since he already knew the answer. Partying. We were in our fourth year of university, so Paxton had been on me more than usual to study harder. My grades were fine. He just never missed an opportunity to criticize me. My clothes, my hair, my grades, my dreams. Nothing was off limits. Paxton always knew one day he'd be a powerful man, so he had this vision of how the woman on his arm should act and look. Look at Felicity, he'd say. Why can't you be more like Felicity? See, Felicity was a party girl like me. However, she appreciated a heavy hand much more than I did. Her father was a retired colonel, so she'd grown used to the stern, rigid alpha male types. Belle was a submissive in and out of the sheets, which is where she and I differed significantly. I only liked being told what to do when my ass was up in the air. That's the spirit, Nick praised. I want a chance to win back the 50 bucks you cheated me out of. It's only cheating if I'd shown my nipples too. Yeah, that's right. I flashed in my boobs to win a drinking game. Some might think it's over the line, but President Grant and I would disagree. Is that right? Nick questioned in a low tone. The look in his eyes made me shift on my feet. I was afraid to name it, 
but I was sure it wasn't the way a man should look at his brother's girlfriend. Thankfully, the boarding agent chose that moment to order us to board the plane. Nick gestured me ahead of him, and I actually felt myself blush when I obliged. Call me crazy, but I could feel his gaze on me the entire way down the jetway. Paxton hung back to walk beside his brother, and I could hear them both whispering while Felicity kept giving me weird looks. We made it onto the plane, and surprise, surprise, we were the last ones. Glancing at my ticket, I quickly found my seat by the window and stowed my purse. When I looked up, I was surprised to see Nick flopping down into the seat next to me. What? I looked across the aisle in time to see Paxton settling in next to Felicity. She looked just as bewildered as I felt, but of course, she didn't speak up and made herself as small as possible which was saying a lot considering she was already tiny. So you're that upset you can't even sit next to me? I questioned Pax. No, he answered while staring at his phone. I just don't want to spend the entire flight fighting, Noel. The way he said my name always sounded so rigid and cold compared to the warmth and adoration when Nick called me L. Suddenly, it dawned on me what they'd been whispering about just before we boarded the plane. Paxton must have asked Nick to switch seats with him. Wow. I scoffed as I sat back and shook my head. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe there was nothing to salvage after all. Still, the question remained why he even suggested this trip. It's not as if we'd planned it a year ago or something. We made plans three months ago, and not once did he ever seem to have second thoughts. I can't really be that bad, Nick said. I tore my gaze away from the window to see him watching me. Do I smell? Is it my hair? He reached up and playfully shoved his fingers through the gorgeous black strands. No, I can't be that. My hair is gorgeous. I didn't want to. I fought really hard. In the end, I couldn't help my smile and the laugh that burst free. I would have to agree. Your hair is fabulous. It's how much time you spend in the mirror I can't quite cope with. Do you ever take a break? It depends on the view, he whispered while holding my gaze. My response got caught in my throat as the plane pulled away from the gate. We managed to taxi down the runway and take off before I dared to exhale. Was Nick flirting with me? Or had I sunk so low I was hoping for the possibility? Chapter 2 Noel. Wow! Felicity gasped as she stepped from the taxi and looked around. I could only nod because I had to concur. The ski resort where we'd be spending the Christmas holiday was top notch. I didn't even want to know how much it cost because I could never afford it. Nick and Paxton's parents were both high-powered attorneys, so they'd grown up around money and each had sizable trust funds. Nick attended university with us for two years before dropping out and starting his own business, while Paxton chose to follow in his parents' footsteps and study law. I was the only one out of the four of us who didn't come for money, so I was grateful for Fell's reaction, making me feel less out of place. What do you think? Nick asked as he came to stand beside me. Since the airport, he hadn't been too far away. I think I could live here if it weren't for the cold. Yeah, I'd choose sand and hot sun over snow and frostbite any day, but baby bro loves the slopes. He shrugged. You're six minutes older than him. And I made every second count. Then, winking, he turned to Paxton, who was paying the cab driver, and said he'd check us in before jogging inside. Even though I knew I shouldn't, I watched him go. He wore jeans, boots, and a black wool overcoat, identical to Paxton's gray coat over his black sweater, and I couldn't help but admire how much better he filled out his clothes. Pax spent more of his time in the library than the gym. One time, after more begging than I care to admit, 
I convinced him to fuck me in the stacks. I promised to be quiet. But after knocking nearly all the books off the shelf and screaming through my orgasm, we ended up having to make a run for it. It was the most fun I ever remember having with him. As usual, sadness swept over me when I wondered how much longer he'd be mine. I loved Paxton and didn't want to lose him, but I wasn't in love with him, and I didn't think he was in love with me. Ready to go? I was startled from my thoughts when I realized Paxton was standing next to me. He hadn't spoken to me since the plane, and I'd pretty much resigned myself to being ignored the entire weekend. I shouldn't have. That was weak shit. It was just that I no longer knew what I was fighting for. Yep, ready to go. I smiled at him, and he, surprisingly, smiled back. The three of us headed inside, and then Paxton told us to wait before joining Nick at the check-in counter. Spotting the bar, I grabbed Felicity's hand and led her across the lobby. I needed a drink, and I needed it now. Is it me, or are they up to something? Felicity asked me while looking over her shoulder and chewing her lip. Oh, definitely. But the question is what? Hmm. Maybe they want to have a freaky threesome with you, Felicity whispered before giggling at the perplexed look on my face. Yeah, I don't think that's it. Paxton's pretty possessive. I bet Nick is too, she mused. They're twins after all. Yeah, but only in looks. Their personalities were like night and day. Nick was the bad boy womanizer who liked to take risks and live in the moment, but seemed deathly allergic to commitment. Pax was the scholar. He was ambitious and disciplined, yet demanding. I used to get off on it, but now it was just a drag. So... Do you think you and Paxton can fix whatever's going on with you two this weekend? Val asked me. I think you should. You guys were great together once, and I think you can be again. <sighs> Sorry, but I think that ship has sailed, which meant we were all up for one hell of an awkward weekend. Think about what you'd be throwing away, Noel. Paxton may have high expectations of himself and everyone around him, but he can be kind and sweet and generous when he wants to be. He's also smarter than anyone I know and reliable. You'll never have to worry if you can count on him to be there. You'd never have to worry at all. Fell was practically gushing with stars in her eyes as she blushed. Not to mention, he's sexy too, she added in a whisper. That he was. I pursed my lips as I considered her words, though perhaps not in the way she had intended. I almost did it. I almost suggested that she date him if she thought he was so great, but I didn't. I knew she was only trying to help. She felt she was looking out for me, and that was okay. I just needed her to understand that no one knew what was best for me better than I did. Felicity cleared her throat and looked away when she noticed me staring and began twisting her hands in her lap. She only did that when she was feeling guilty or nervous about something. You're right, Val. Paxton would make some girl out there the luckiest woman alive. The right girl. It's becoming apparent to me that I'm not that girl. I want someone I can stand beside, not behind. I want to be with a man who doesn't make me feel like a child for wanting to have fun. I'm 21, for fuck's sake. I want to enjoy being carefree before all the real-world problems come crashing in like a never-ending tidal wave. I want a partner, Fell. I already have a father. Felicity swallowed before giving a slight, reluctant nod. Ladies? The bartender greeted while wiping down the bar space in front of us. What will you have? Two Jack Frosties, please. Oh, I'm not drinking, Fell announced, making me turn my head her way. I didn't get the chance to tell you, but Paxton offered to teach me how to ski. She paused as if realizing how strange that sounded, considering he was my boyfriend, 
And this was supposed to be a vacation. Is that okay? I shrugged before turning to face the bartender again. Two Jack Frosties, please. Noelle? Felicity, it's fine. Go. Have fun. I could feel her wary stare as I watched the bartender prepare my drinks. She knew me well enough to know I'd be getting shit-faced expeditiously. Paxton had been promising to teach me for years, and now that the opportunity had finally presented itself, he chose my best friend instead. When the bartender finally set my drinks down in front of me, I couldn't gulp the first one down fast enough. Incidentally, that was when asshole numbers one and two showed up. Okay, that wasn't fair. Nick had only ever been kind to me. I'd say he's always treated me like a sister, but that would be weird considering he'd been flirting with me at every turn. Getting started without me, are you? I told you that you were a cheater, Nick teased. I made a sound of distress when Nick snatched up my second Jack Frosty and began chugging it down. He finished before me, even though I had a clear head start. Then he flashed the biggest shit-eating grin as he slammed the glass back on the counter. I win. How? We weren't even playing. And that was mine, by the way. You owe me another, I pouted. That's easy. Give me something hard to do. Nick hopped onto the stool next to me and flagged the bartender, who nodded and began making two more. I guess that leaves us, Paxton said to Felicity, as if he hadn't planned it all along. What do you say? Should we hit the slopes? Felicity glanced at me, and when I gave nothing away, she nodded softly to Paxton, who held out his hand to her. Nick, don't let her drink too much, will ya? Sorry, twin, I can't promise that. L drank me under the table last time. I need to win my manhood back. No chance of that, I mumbled, making Nick grin. Paxton shook his head, and when he started to walk away with Fell, I called his name. Paxton stopped and turned, and I could feel three sets of eyes on me as I stood from the stool and closed the distance between us, grabbing the lapels of his winter coat. I rose onto my tiptoes and kissed his lips. It took longer than it should have for him to kiss me back. And even then, it lacked passion. Don't be long, I whispered, before finally letting him go. He looked flustered, and for some reason, he cast a guilty glance over my shoulder instead of his, before nodding and walking away with my best friend. When I finally turned back to the bar where Nick was waiting, the last thing I expected was to see the flash of anger and jealousy in his eyes before he quickly gave me his back. What the hell? Why did I get the feeling I just kissed the wrong twin? Chapter 3 Noel. It took me three tries to get the key card into the door. Nick had given it to me after abruptly calling it a night, so I'd spent the last few hours drinking alone. There was no one to stop me except the bartender, who had finally cut me off, but not before I got well and truly intoxicated. Since I kissed his twin, Nick had been in a sour mood, as if I'd cheated on him and not his brother especially considering the fantasies I'd been having about Nick since the airport. I wasn't sure if thoughts counted, but as obscene as mine had been, they should. The room was pitch black with the curtains drawn and not even a single light left on, but I could still make out the bed and the still figure lying on it. Paxton, are you awake? Light snores were my only answer as I tiptoed deeper into the room, it was late, around two in the morning, I think, so it was no surprise Paxton was asleep. He was a late-to-bed, early-to-rise kind of person, preferring to make the most of each day. I admired that about him, and as I kicked off my shoes and shed my clothes, I recalled all the other things that made me fall for him. Perhaps Fell was right, and I was giving up too easily. 
Or maybe I was just horny and willing to lie to myself, a natural side effect of the alcohol I'd consumed and the three months I'd gone without. I climbed into bed once I was down to my panties and bra and curled against Paxton's hard side, running my fingers down his abs, which felt harder than I remembered. I slipped my hand inside his shorts and boxers and felt the moment he awakened. Looking up, I found blue eyes watching me through the dark, and I offered him a lascivious smile. What do you say we make up? I suggested in my best siren voice. It took a lot not to slur my words and give away just how drunk I was. I knew Paxton would be turned off, and spend the night scolding me instead. Paxton didn't respond, but he didn't stop me either, as I wrapped my hand around his cock and began stroking him. After a full minute, and only getting a semi-hard cock for my efforts, I pouted. Baby, I know you're mad at me, but I'm sorry for being a bad girl. At this point, I'd say anything to get some dick. Those must have been the magic words because his dick suddenly swelled in my hand and was now hard enough to break a brick. I just barely made out his hand as he reached for the waistband of his shorts and boxers, pulling them down enough to free his cock. It was now lying against his bare stomach, and if it wasn't dark, I knew it would be all purple, veiny, and mouth-watering. Hop on it he urged when I simply gaped. My pussy responded at the invitation, and I thought about giving him head before deciding I couldn't wait. Instead, I hurriedly straddled his waist before shoving my panties to the side. Something about this encounter had me hotter for sex than I'd been in years. I whimpered the moment I felt his dick part my pussy lips. I rocked my hips, coating his length with my arousal as our breathing became heavy. Noel, he snapped when he grew tired of my teasing. Like the good girl I'd promised to be, I positioned his head at my entrance before I began to sink onto him. <sighs> Fuck, he gasped at the feeling of my tight walls surrounding him. Oh, I moaned. He was definitely thicker. I was only halfway down and fuller than I'd ever been when I stopped and chewed my lip. I decided it would have to do. I could feel his eyes on me and his hands roaming my body as I slowly raised and lowered my body. The moment it started to feel good, I closed my eyes and threw my head back, getting lost in the pleasure. Oh, Paxton... Suddenly, those gentle hands turned punishing when he gripped my waist and forced me down until he was completely buried within me. I let out a choked cry, and before I could even register the shock, he snapped through the dark. Not Paxton. Um, what? I was still in denial because it was clearly Paxton staring back at me, but then it suddenly dawned on me. He'd called me L. Paxton never called me L. Only, oh my God. I scrambled to reach for the lamp switch on the nightstand. Once light flooded the room, I realized those were pale blue eyes staring back at me. The wrong blue eyes. Paxton's were slightly darker. Nick, what the hell are you doing? Come again. What are you doing in our room? I shouted. I'm not, he snapped back. This is my room. I looked around, wondering how I could have fucked up so monumentally. But of course, Nick was the one who'd given me the wrong key, so the blame was partially his. I I'm so sorry. I didn't mean... I stopped talking when I realized he was still inside of me. Jesus. I rushed to lift off him when his hands quickly grabbed my waist, keeping me immobile. I gaped at Nick, speechless and utterly confused. What are you doing? His answer was to lift me slowly, only to sink his length back inside of me. The only sound was our moans as he reached the hilt, 
and we silently enjoyed the feeling of him throbbing inside of me. Eventually, the guilt forced me to speak up. We can't, Nick. I shook my head, even though I made no move to stop him. We already are, Elle. It's done. No. I stumbled to argue while my heart pounded. That was a mistake. An honest mistake. Who would believe you? Would Pax? He paused and gave me a look. Would you? No. If the shoe were on the other foot, I would never believe Pax had just stumbled into the wrong pussy. Oh, God. Let me go. I have to go. This is wrong. How can it be wrong when it feels this good? I didn't respond or fight him as he shoved down my bra and pulled my nipple between his lips. He suckled long enough to drive me crazy. And then he lifted his head. Fuck me, L. But he's your brother, I whined, even as my hips began to rock. They had a mind of their own with Nick's cock inside of me. I belong to... His lazy upward thrusts suddenly stopped. Don't you dare finish that sentence, L. We both know it's a crock of shit. You picked the wrong brother. Deal with it. The slap I unexpectedly delivered to his cheek bought me enough time to lift myself off his cock and make a run for it. Scrambling across the queen bed, I managed to get one foot on the floor before he caught me and dragged me back by my ankle. No, I screamed, not out of desperation, but rather as a petulant child who wasn't getting their way. I wanted it. God, I wanted it but I didn't want to face the consequences of letting Nick fuck me. After throwing me on my back and ripping my panties down my thighs, he shoved my legs apart before climbing between them. I pounded his broad chest and shoulders, which didn't seem to faze him in the least. He'll never forgive me, Nick. Then tell him I raped you, he callously stated, as he lined himself up at my entrance. I don't give a fuck, but you're not leaving this room until I have you. Before I could say another word, he shoved his thick cock inside of me. The scream I let out mingled with his groan of pleasure. And for a moment, neither of us moved. We seemed suspended in time and space as the reality of what we'd done, what we allowed to happen, settled over us. Nick lifted his head, and when our eyes met, our lips reached for each other at the same time. Fuck, baby, he moaned against my mouth. Tell me this is real, he urged as he fucked me. I've wanted you for so fucking long. Unhooking my bra, I let my back rest against the mattress. My breasts bounced in time with his thrusts, drawing his gaze as I wrapped my legs around his waist. I could see the feelings he'd kept a secret from everyone, including himself, shining brightly in his eyes now. I knew because I felt that same freedom within myself. It's real, but it could only be real this once. I knew Nick would come to his senses once this was over and he saw that we could never be. Whether Paxton and I were together or not, Nick and I would always be off limits. He made love to me through my first orgasm, and then he quickly flipped me onto my stomach before sinking himself inside me again. I felt his weight on my back and his heat all over as he shoved me into the mattress over and over again. I know what you're thinking, he whispered roughly in my ear, but this is not the end. It will happen again and again and again and again. Each Warning was punctuated with a sharp thrust of his hips until my lips hung open, but no sound came, and I was reduced to a wet hole made for his desires. You're mine, Elle. Say it. A second orgasm ripped through me at that exact moment, and when I finally came down, I whispered the truth he wanted to hear. I'm yours. I felt his gentle kiss on my sweaty shoulder blade just before he yanked my ass in the air. He then locked a hand around my nape 
and the other on my hip before proceeding to fuck the shit out of me. All I could do was snivel and whimper like a wounded puppy as he abused my pussy and made me come a third time. A bitch didn't even know she was multi-orgasmic. Nick, please, I whined after I came a fourth time. I lost points for tapping out, but I didn't even care. I couldn't take any more. Dick this good could only come from the devil. When he didn't respond, I peered into the mirror adjacent to the bed as much as I could due to his hold on my neck and swallowed. Sweat glistened from every hard ridge of his naked body as he fucked me with his head thrown back and eyes closed. He was completely lost in the feeling, and the sight left me in awe. It was enough to distract me from my sore pussy as he continued to use me with no purpose other than to fill me with cum. Deciding to test my theory, I pretended to move out of his hold and the warning growl that came from him chilled me to my bones. Lowering his head, he slowly opened his eyes, and I watched him through the mirror as he stared down at me. A moment later, I was yanked upright until my back was against his chest. Gripping my chin, he turned my head, and then we kissed over my shoulder. I didn't even notice him walking us forward on his knees until I felt my nipples brushing against cold, hard wood. Nick abruptly ended the kiss, and that was when I realized my front was now trapped against the tall headboard, and with Nick at my back, there was nowhere to run. Oh, I risked everything to have you, he whispered. Stay. I can't come again, I whispered back. He said nothing as he ran a gentle hand down my stomach, spreading heat and desire, as if there wasn't enough of that going on already. When he reached my pussy and began to strum my clit, I suddenly realized what he was up to. One more. I came for a fifth time while he watched and fucked me through it. Our gazes remained locked as we listened to the sound of our moans mingling, skin clapping, his cock tunneling, and the headboard knocking against the wall. I saw the exact moment he lost control. His pupils dilating warned me just before he grunted. The feeling was indescribable, but it was the look in his eyes that I would remember on all my lonely nights ahead. I already wanted to see it again, but I remembered the promise to myself. I searched and waited for the guilt and recognition of what we'd done to come as Nick caught his breath, but it didn't come. There was only relief and the eagerness to do it again. We were both quiet as he pulled out of me, and then he wordlessly climbed from the bed before disappearing into the bathroom. I eyed the door as I listened to the sound of water running and wondered if I should leave before he returned. My legs felt like jelly when I finally decided to make a run for it, and I ended up collapsing on the mattress. I don't know how long I stayed there, but I must have dozed off because what sounded like a lock slamming into place jarred me awake. I shot up just as Nick appeared still very much naked. We stared at each other as he crossed the room, and it wasn't until he nudged my legs apart that I noticed he was holding a wet cloth. I can do that, I nervously urged when he started to clean me. Ignoring me as usual, Nick took his time making sure every inch of me was come free before tossing the cloth on the floor and standing. I watched him pull back the covers before meeting my gaze. Get in. Uh, I should go before Pax comes looking for me. And Nick still hadn't told me how I'd ended up in his room instead of mine. Had he made a mistake giving me the wrong room key? Or had he planned this? I didn't want to believe Nick was the nefarious type. 
but the fact that he seemed entirely at ease screwing his brother's girlfriend said a lot. He won't, Nick assured me with a confidence I found unsettling. Get in. How do you know that? I narrowed my gaze. Where is he, Nick? What the hell do you care? You just screwed his brother. You're not his concern anymore. Shocked by Nick's cruel reminder of what I'd done, I felt the weight of his words settle on my shoulders as panic twisted my stomach into knots. I scrambled from the bed and went to grab my clothes, but Nick beat me to them and held them out of my reach. Get them back to me, you prick. Get in the fucking bed and take your ass to sleep, L. You're not going anywhere. Fuck you. The two of us fought all over the room, probably waking up the neighbors, too, until it ended with me chasing him onto the balcony. I stood there, eyes bugged out of my head as he held my clothes and shoes over the rail. Anger quickly fled, and panic took hold. Nick, don't. Then get your ass in my bed. Seeing no other choice than to leave naked, I retreated into the room and climbed into bed. Nick followed eventually, and after ensuring himself that I had followed orders, he crossed the room. My jaw dropped when he opened the safe and shoved my clothes and shoes inside before setting a code I couldn't see. What do you think I'm gonna do? I snapped as he climbed in next to me. Leave in the middle of the night? Actually, that was exactly what I'd planned to do. The fact that he called my bluff really pissed me off. I know how you think, he claimed as he pulled me close and wrapped his arms around me. You think I could be this in love with you and not know? I grumbled against his chest, even though my heart skipped a beat hearing that he loved me. I guessed, or at least I hoped, but knowing was another thing. Knowing was everything. You love me? I whispered so low I'd be surprised if he heard. I was staring up at him with so much hope that I hadn't heard wrong, even though he couldn't see it because his eyes were closed. You know I do. You've known all along. It came out like a growl, signaling his annoyance that I wouldn't let him sleep. I'd already interrupted the sound sleep he'd been in when I drunkenly stumbled in and hopped on the wrong cock. I should have felt more regret than I did, but as my lids slowly lowered and my breathing deepened, I decided that was tomorrow's problem. Welcome back. Hey. Make sure you check out um, all the show notes for the stuff we've talked about and the giveaway, uh, new releases, everything else that's happening. And we'll be back on Thursday with the second half of The Wrong Blue Eyes. All right, tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me 